My fellow Americans, we are under attack from a threat we cannot see, a threat we cannot hear, a threat we cannot smell. It's time to practice better hygiene, people. We are under attack. No, we're not. But we might be. And we are if we interact with DeFi protocols. Today, we're talking about how to implement better MetaMask hygiene to avoid all the stinky, nasty little things that can infect your wallet and make you all grimy and slimy. So if that's something you're interested in and you want to learn a few tips and tricks on how to keep your MetaMask in better order, then this is the tutorial for you. And all of that is coming up after this message from our sponsors. Nexo is a trusted and easy to use crypto lending and exchange platform where you can buy cryptocurrencies at the touch of a button and start earning up to 20% annual interest that is paid out daily. They support all of the major assets on the market and allow you to swap one asset for another with lightning speed and buy crypto with your credit or debit card instantly. You can also borrow cash and stablecoins tax efficiently against your digital assets without selling them. Nexo complies with the highest security standards and is audited in real time, which is why nearly 3 million people in over 200 countries trust the platform with their digital assets. So whether you're just getting started or you're a seasoned pro, get the most of your crypto today with Nexo. Do you want high yields? Don't like impermanent loss? Then head to ocp.finance for up to 20% native APY on Bitcoin, stablecoins, and your other favorite cryptos. Native APY. That means no more shitcoin rewards for me and for you. You stake Bitcoin, you get Bitcoin. No lockups, fully liquid, and fully DeFi. ocp.finance. Yeah, I'd buy that for a dollar. I didn't say that. They said that. I might say that. So it's time to start this tutorial with the Badger DAO hack, where $120 million in cryptocurrency were taken from a DeFi protocol. So far, so normal, this is DeFi, right? Except this was something slightly different because if you know BadgerDAO, it's a place where you can deposit Bitcoin and earn DeFi rewards. Basically, it's a better strategy than holding, but of course, you're exposed to smart contract risk. But it wasn't the smart contracts that were exploited this time. The hacker stole an API key that gave them access to Badger's Cloudflare account, then injected a malicious script onto the website that did some weird things to MetaMask. It basically changed the wallet permissions so that anyone using the protocol was then unwittingly serving up unlimited access to their funds. And this meant that the hackers could drain everything from their wallets. How did this work exactly? So if you've interacted with any DeFi protocols, particularly swaps, you'll have probably come across this window where it says, do you allow the local host to spend your DAI or so-and-so token? And then you'll be asked to unlock a specified amount or unlock an, an infinite amount. And in this case, Badger users were presented with this choice of unlocking um, their tokens even though they were actually withdrawing. So normally when you are asked to unlock, it's because you're going to deposit tokens. It's You're going into the protocol. But here, people were coming out of the protocol. And of course, I'm sure most of us, when we are in a hurry or when you know we're just assuming things are going to work, we just say, yes, of course I approve, because why wouldn't you? But of course, this is basically how these hackers exploited it. Now, the, the main exploit in all of this was actually uh, on Badger's front end, but the people that got affected by this were, well, it was you and me. So we were unwittingly giving up permission to the Badger, but to the hacker, to basically have an unlimited access to the funds in our wallet. So here's some basic hygiene for when you're interacting with a protocol and using MetaMask. Make sure, first of all, that you know what it is that you are actually approving. So here you have an instance give, giving permission to access your ENS for Uniswap. Um, the first thing you need to do is check the address here. What is this? And don't trust the UI on a website. So next thing to do is just check whether the contract is brand new because if it is then i mean obviously everyone has to start from somewhere but if a contract's brand new then there are more reasons to be mistrustful of it and then of course be mindful of how much it is you're actually approving so here you can see the permissions limit the proposed approval limit and the custom spend limit that you can set so let's actually do this for reals so i have a, a uniswap swap that I've set up here. So I'm going to swap one ENS for ETH. And you have here, allow the Uniswap protocol to use your ENS. So we click through on that. 
it pops up a MetaMask window. And normally you just go, yes, confirm. We're not going to do that. First thing we're going to do is click on this contract address here, which is going to take us to Etherscan. And then we're going to click on this contract address here. And this will now give us information about what's happening with this contract. And we can actually go further. We can see that there's a lot of um, transactions going through this at the moment. Uh, we can also look here, the create a transaction hash. This will tell us how old this contract is. And this is actually 222 days old. So it's relatively old in the grand scheme of things. So we can probably assume that this is okay. One of the things we can do is just check um, here under the contract. This is a Uniswap DEX. And there are no red flags on this contract because normally people are pretty good at flagging a malicious contract now when they spot one. And you'll see a, a red flag up here saying this has been flagged as uh, malicious or uh, an exploited contract and it will be blocked. So that's how you would do that. And then the next thing that you need to think about up here, if we are to go ahead and grant permission, just click on edit permissions here. So now you'll have the option to approve simply this transaction or a custom spend limit, which you could uh, put in here. Uh, we'll, we'll dig back into that in, a, in the next step as we go through this. Um, but that's how that works. Then the next thing to do is use revoke.cash to trek and remove infinite approvals. So in certain protocols, you will have infinite approvals. So let's say, for instance, um, I wanted to grant access to a protocol. Um, every time I wanted to use it, I might want to deposit USDC, for instance. And so instead of setting it every time, this is how much USDC I want to put in, I'll just go, yeah, infinite approval. Um, you know, you can, every time I want to use this, it's, it's fine. I might want to do 10,000. I might want to do 5,000. I might want to do 100,000. It doesn't matter. We're good to go. This is what an infinite approval looks like contract-wise. You can see down here, there's all these Fs. F, 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 F. That means infinite approval. Now, I already set up revoke.cash. You connect your, your MetaMask. And then here we go. I can see that I actually have quite a lot of infinite uh, unlimited allowance um, approvals allowed on a number of different sites, which I'm now somewhat skeptical about. So I would click on revoke and revoke these if I was unhappy with them. Um, for the moment, I'm not going to do that, but you can now see how you would do that. And you can simply click on revoke. It'll open up a transaction for you to sign. I'm just going to reject this one for now. And then you'll be able to go ahead and revoke that permission. So that's something to definitely be aware of. Um, and you can use revoke.cash to do this. Uh, another thing that you can do with MetaMask is if you click on MetaMask, you go to these three dots here and then go to connected sites. This will tell you um, how many sites your MetaMask account is connected to. And as again, I can see that I have a lot of sites that I really shouldn't be connected to and I don't want to be connected to. So I'm just going to click on this dustbin icon here. Say yes, I want to disconnect, and then I'll disconnect. Now, there's no issue with this. If you want to reconnect, then you can reconnect when you come back to it. But in this instance, I don't need to be connected to these sites if I don't want to be. The other thing is, um, if you're not at your computer and you're not, you don't need to use MetaMask, I would highly recommend doing this. Click on this red this circle here, and then select Lock. This will shut MetaMask down, and you are done. That's it. Your MetaMask is basically unaccessible to anybody using your browser, your computer. It's just good hygiene. So I've now logged back in, and we're going to get to the final piece of this, which is um, finding out where your tokens have been approved and revoking that approval should you so desire. And we can do that using Etherscan. So here's what we're going to do. Go back into MetaMask. And here, on these three dots, we're going to show view account on Etherscan. And what you want to want to do here is go over to this more here, drop down, and you'll see token approvals. It's in beta, but it does work. Token approvals. And here, we need to connect to Web3. Now we're connected, and we can actually revoke the approvals for various coins that we want to on various exchanges or 
protocols that we're connected to. So for instance here, if I wanted to revoke the Botto access for Uniswap, I could do so by clicking revoke. I then have to sign a transaction and we'd be good to go. So that is some basic MetaMask hygiene. As hackers become more sophisticated, as we have more and more value stored in our Ethereum wallets, it's gonna be more and more important to just have a bunch of really simple tasks and routines that we perform to keep our MetaMask safe. These are some of the ones, they're not all of them by any means, but I think if you do this, you should be in much better shape. Of course, if you wanna learn more about what we call blind signing, we did an episode of this on School of Block, and you can use a ledger to add an additional layer of security. But of course, all the same rules apply because if you're interacting with OpenSea, you're gonna be going through MetaMask. All things to be mindful of. And if you have any suggestions for us or tips and tricks that you've picked up, then do drop them in the comments below. And as always, get subscribed, drop us a like, be good to yourselves and each other. I'll see you on the next one. Boop.